Welcome to our very keen panelists who, as those of you who are listening can tell, are utterly thrilled with the very idea of even being here. <laughs> Poor Tracy, don't worry, you'll be fine. Well, everyone, welcome to the great debate. Um, for those of you who have been watching the internet, you'll know that this is utterly hilarious. I'm not a cat, I'm not a cat. Actually, I'm just me. I was going to look for the Snapchat filter, but I didn't have a small enough person handy who was able to navigate those complicated details for me. So I had to make do with the best I could find at the drop of a hat on Zoom. Um, welcome to, uh, to the audience as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as you will know, if you are a Cothy regular, the great debate is by far the best part of Cothy. Yes, yes, we can all do presentations and serious stuff, but the great debate is where it's at. It's the most serious, scholarly, rigorous debate that you'll encounter this year. Actually, probably commiserations if you are genuinely expecting something academic, you might be very interested to see how some of your esteemed colleagues actually behave and talk when they're not being quite so serious. Um, before I start, uh, it's a little bit tricky to acknowledge country because we're all on the different lands of different people in different countries, but I think it'd be nice for us all to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands in which you are located. Uh, you can do that just quietly to yourself or you can put it in the chat if you want to. I'm uh, in Brisbane, so I'm on the Turbal and, and Jurgara country and I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and also acknowledge those traditional owners of any of the places in which you are all located. Now, the proposition this year, it was not that difficult, to be honest, to come up with something that would work. Because as you all know, we are really working very hard with putting everything online. So the proposition was relatively obvious. And it is, face-to-face -face is so outdated, we should move everything online, keep it there. That's quite, it's quite easy, quite straightforward. That's what we should do, everything should be online. Uh, of course, not everyone will agree. And that's the purpose of the debate. I love your tea there, Oscar, excellent. Um, so team one uh, is the affirmative. So the affirmative team are arguing that yes, absolutely face-to-face -face, um, is just, it's just gone, done, we're done. And everything should be moved online. So I'd like to introduce you to the fabulous affirmative team. Uh, we have uh, Professor Kan Seng Ui from the University of Tasmania. We have Tamara Young from the University of Newcastle. Oscar Pinter from Edith Cowan University. <coughs> Hello. Faith Young, Faith Ong, sorry love, from the University of Queensland. Hello. Now, the negative team, so they are arguing that this online malarkey is ridiculous. Let's get back to meeting face to face as soon as possible. We have Tracy Harkison from Auckland University of Technology. We have Ming Ming Chen from Curtin University, Sharon Hebden from Holmes Glen Institute, and Dennis Tolkert from James Cook University. So Test. Names and faces that you'll all recognize, and I'm sure you're really looking forward to seeing them making, no, I wouldn't even say they're going to be doing anything. They'll be being very professional, I'm sure. Now, each panelist uh, has five minutes to present their persuasive pitch to you. Now, I will warn you that it is a five minute presentation only. If you do go over time, I will be there interrupting you. I have my trusty uh, phone, which will ring and tell me that it's time for you to stop. And I won't hesitate to leap in there and stop you. So just watch, don't go over time. Now, usually when we're all face to face, the vote is done by the very, very highly scientific method of who gets the loudest cheer. However, given that that poses a few technological issues when we're on Zoom, what we're going to do instead is have a poll for you to vote for the winning team. Uh, at the end of the presentations, I'll open up the poll and we'll see how it goes and then we'll announce the winner. And as usual, let the best team win. So without further ado, as is traditional, I would like to announce the first speaker to speak for the affirmative, and that is Kan Seng. So Kan Seng, the stage is yours if you would like to take over. All right, you're gonna see that I'm not Kan Seng. So thank you for the introduction. Judith, my name is Faith, and I'm gonna start for the affirmative th team. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, non-binary folks. Welcome to our great debate, where we focus on the most important issues of our day going online. It's 2021, I cannot believe we still have to debate this. Face-to-face -face is so passe, insisting on it is so 1999. Or is it actually 2019? Well, no, I put to you that insisting on partying like it's 2019 is going to be all passe. 
Our team does not believe on past in pastism. We believe in grabbing the future by its horns and knowing what it is that the future holds. We are one of the only two teams that believe that the future is what we want. And so in this calendar year, where we thought everything was fine, everyone was fine, that was 2019. But have you even met 2020? Well, things remain uncertain into the future in these unprecedented times. We have a new normal that we, requires us to adapt and we must adhere to social distancing. We must be flexible about the future and pivot into that and remember, we're all in this together. But who are we to champion going online? Well, we're researchers who love people and love learning about people. We even have an associate professor in human and social futures. So we like people, we understand people, and we understand that the virtual world is an integral part of the world now. And to deny that we are going online to remain firmly in the past, hashtag pastism. But before we go on to state our case, we want you to know that we understand where the opposition is coming from. You want social interactions, the tangibility of hugs and touch. We know the arguments for efficiency and productivity. So to convince you that the future compels us to move forward with a giant leap into technology, we start back into the analog world. One of the key arguments for face-to-face -face is that it is easier to communicate without lag in real life. You know, that's really funny because you know what it's, this also facilitates? On the spot interruption. Interruption has been found to be one of the main symptoms of social ills, such as workplace bullying and mansplaining. In our team, we highly recommend practices that reduce the enabling of such social ills. After all, we want to work towards a better society, don't we? There is the element of gathering, of breaking bread together, of sharing hugs and germs. I mean, it's all fun and games when you can throw exes together face to face, but all it takes is one accidental slip of the hand and oops, hit you in the face with the X, sorry. I mean, back in the early days of Facebook, you could throw sheep at each other and no one would get hurt. But apparently the opposition thinks that there's no fun if you can't get hurt. And we get it. It's really nice to have face-to-face -face meetings class and classes, right? That way, you don't need to worry about whether who you are seeing is real and authentic or not. You have them physically in front of you. I mean, there's no chance it will be some sort of deep fake video or something, right? And oh, we better trap them in the same room as us to ensure their attention. And speaking of attention, you probably like face-to-face -face because that means you can concentrate on the meeting itself and not be distracted. That's the point of having everyone in the same room, right? So that you can make sure that everyone is mindfully engaged and paying attention. And same with our face-to-face -face classes. I mean. It's not like we check our phones when we're in face-to-face -face meetings or tutorials or seminars or anything. And some might argue that when we get together, we can have face-to-face powwows and concentrate on getting the best solutions, the best solutions. After all, it's not as if long meetings are exhausting, right? We all love to be in long meetings, not. So while these have worked for our meetings and teaching and anything that we had face-to-face -face until the start of 2020, we're kidding ourselves if we think we're gonna be fine. Some of the advantages of face-to-face -face have already eroded themselves away and made themselves irrelevant. Sticking to the old ways is not fine. The old normal is no longer enough. So dear colleagues, what I have presented shows that face-to-face -face serves purposes that are valid, but we need to move online because these functions can still be fulfilled with online alternatives and more. We can handle this truth together. My team members will further explain why online is the way to go. In the meantime, I ask you to consider what the opposition team has been spending their time on and whether it is in the best interest of our community who spend, for people who spend half their time in movies and K-pop circles and only the other half pondering the important needs of our communities. Thank you so much for your time. Mash that button for the affirmative team and know that we as a team are not afraid of commitment and we want to move forward with you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Faith. That was fantastic. Well done. I loved every minute of that. And as for all these fantastic celebrities dancing around on your, your PowerPoint, that was just outstanding. Love it. Okay, so um, since I got the last person wrong, I'm not even going to say who it is from the other team. Can whoever it is that wants to go first from the negative team, please leap in there and take over. Uh, 
So thank you, Faith. That was, uh, that was great. Thank you. I really appreciated that. So uh, hi, everybody. Uh, as you can see, I've actually started drinking because um, it's actually five o'clock here in New Zealand. And uh, it's probably one of the joys of online learning uh, because of the time difference. Uh, so me, it's totally worked out. And yes, Seb, you are right in our mentoring um, session. I was on my third of g and while in Hong Kong, you were actually still on your first coffee. And Erwin, are you out of your PJs yet? Or actually, have you decided that it is five o'clock in Holland, so whatever um, goes, stays? Well, I have to admit, this was me when uh, I was told that we had to do online learning. And uh, I know that it was last year and we had to do it due to COVID. And I know we had to do it and we've been transforming seamlessly and everything has moved on there. But move on there and stay, uh, no way. I think that uh, myself and Denise and Ming Ming and Sharon will actually tell you that uh, we have to have face to face and it is certainly not outdated. Uh, well, I think this slide really explains it all. I don't think I need to say anything else. Online, uh, online learning is just boring and it's not good for you. Um, actually, sitting with other people is actually very good for you. So Faith, this is for you really, uh, being such a cat person, and really how motivated are students when they are online learning? Again, I think that uh, this slide really does explain it all. And maybe this is Faith's cat. And as for thinking about, you know, us, do you think that we've all felt like the person on the right? Or am I the only person that's ever felt like this? I think that face to face, to be honest with you, teaches, um, promotes engagement and discussion, actually not silence. And although I know this shows the difference between primary schools and secondary schools, surely this is the same for universities. There are times on online teaching when I felt like a Scientologist Teaching online is like a Scientologist. All that you do is that you're actually talking to a metal box because your students never have their cameras switched on. And if you have face-to-face -face, uh, teaching, then again, there is no issue about that. And don't even get me started on PJs, uh, being your chosen uh, work attire and how we present ourselves while we're teaching and learning. And again, I think this slide says it all. And believe me, you would never see Tamara being the picture on the right. And online learning has definitely blurred our home and our work lives as our work has become our home and our home has become our work. So face to face actually gives us very clear lines as to where work life starts or where our home life starts and having this division is actually very good for your mental health. And surely we want our students to be engaged and not worrying about what food creation they're actually going to post next on Instagram while we're actually still being online. So if we did move on to everything being online, is that graduation too? Surely this is what we want. But hey, let's be serious for one minute. Let's think about face-to-face -face teaching and the many advantages that it actually has. Students are able to concentrate harder on their learning because there are less distractions than they have when they're at home. Students will gain a greater understanding and stories and real world experiences and examples from their lecturers and other students. Students have a greater chance of completing their coursework successfully by doing classroom learning. And the completion rate is actually five times higher than online learning. Students also feel very comfortable and learn more easily in familiar traditional classroom situations and classrooms can actually, and sorry, students can actually access more information and richer understanding through the lecturer and other students body language and voice. And students have the opportunity to connect and problem solve and network with other students and from a wide range of backgrounds. And lastly, if everything was to be moved online, then we wouldn't be able to do this or this or this. 
or this, we'd actually end up doing this. So face to face is not outdated I and I cannot move everything online and keep it there. Thank you. <laughs> well done, Tracy. That was fabulous. A light, beautiful blast from the past there at some of the, uh, the final <laughs> pictures. Some I think probably I should pretend I didn't see. But anyway, moving on, let's move on to the next person who's going to uh, speak again, this time from, from the opposition team to yourselves this time. Uh, and I, again, I have no idea who it is because you all didn't tell me what order you were speaking in. So um, the next person, please. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, well, my name is Dr. Oscar Warbiova Spinta, and I'm from Edith Cowan University uh, in Western Australia. Thank you to the gorgeous, smart, yet somehow lost and misguided opposing team who are clearly stuck in 2019. I'm here to introduce you to onlineism. Wear what you want, drink what you want, and learn what you want. So let's look at some of the advantage uh, to teaching and learning online. My team obviously are the best to talk about this. However, besides our achievements that are all over LinkedIn, you know, a social media platform for the self-proclaimed and self-indulged experts and gurus in, uh, who are constantly reaching out, pivoting and disrupting the status quo. You don't need us to convince you that online learning has far more benefits than the analog, I mean the old fashioned face-to-face -face learning. We have experts right here in the negative team. Just look at them. For an unknown reason, they are sitting on the other side today. Perhaps they need to schedule a telehealth appointment to discuss the bi-academic disorder. Yes, even doctors, I mean the real ones moved online, yet the opposing team is clinging to the past like sea urchins under rock. Let's look at all of them. Well, we have Dennis. In these unprecedented times, Dennis embraces the new normal and encourages people to stay connected. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong picture. I mean, he does like online coffee. He says that online is innovative, thought provoking, friendly and funny. Perhaps Dennis should explore the autoethnographic methods next time he conducts his own research. If him being a the pro face to face team isn't stupid enough, then I am a ballerina. Ming Ming, let's look. Ming Ming is uh, an expert in everything digital. Ming Ming knows that online spaces allow us to interact socially and that such connections are meaningful, real and authentic. I mean, he is an expert in emojis of all kinds and the authentic meaning of them. And then we have Sharon, right? So another advantage of online learning and uh, teaching is efficiency and productivity. And ResearchGate knows it all, as you know. Just look at the superstar in online learning. Well done, Sharon. And then there is Tracy, who is relieved that face-to-face -face teaching has concluded, and she has obviously to brag about it. Where? Online, you're right. We all know that Tracy, what really Tracy wants is just fun and games. So Tra Tracy, let, uh, let me tell you that you can have more fun and games if you teach in the online space. You know, you've heard the Mentimeter and Kahoot, or did you mean fun and games in a luxury resort away from children? Mm, that's a thought. And then there's obviously, let's be nice and, and honest. Tracy knows that online teaching saves time. With all this time in the world, Tracy became somewhat of the internet famous designer. All of Tracy wants to do is knitting, which leads me to another advantage point, teaching online saves times. Imagine how much you could knit in the time you spent your day on your daily commute. But let's go back to the clothing part. Australian households and businesses have saved more than $200 billion um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is not surprising as most of us had only half to dress. I mean, look at, our, uh, at those legs. 
Dear listeners, I believe you do not suffer some, from stu stupidity as defined by Dr. Tolkach, and we have presented strong conceptual and empirical model to support the claims that online teaching and learning is the future and the way forward. As, and you, my dear Corthy 2021 delegates, are the living proof of this. My exhaustive ethnographic research of a random sample of Corthy 2021 delegates supports the claim that onlineism is the future because it allows us to be real and authentic. Just look at those pride socks. Efficient. I guess we all mastered that perfect selfie with our screens. Socially interactive even with ourselves, productive, no matter what time of the day it is and what you're wearing. And yes, Tracy, or Celtic goddess as you want, I do have what to say about this. Time Oscar. <laughs> Tracy and the negative team, you're clearly on our side and I encourage you all vote for the affirmative team. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. I'm a little bit unsure what to say, but you're a very naughty man. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... That's <laughs> all in my tea. Yeah, and there's been some questions as to whether there is actually tea in that or whether that's actually something else, but okay, we'll not go there just now. Um, we, <laughs> we will now move on. And from the uh, little thing that popped up there, I'm going to guess that the next person is Ming Ming. So take it away. Are you there? You're on mute, Ming Ming. Whoa, 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 hello, you're on mute. <laughs> That's typical of experts in digital media. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's online learning. Okay, okay. Hello, I want, can you hear me now? Yes or no? No response. Who organized this conference? The affirmative must play some tricks on us. Uh, very bad at organizing teams. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, that's not what I want to say. I don't mean that. No, um, oh no, I will hear about it. No, I didn't mean that. Well, anyway, you know, why should I care? Because the bigger boss are not here. I can't see the cozy chair cushion here. I cannot see the co conference chairs, Marianne and Paul. Big boss are not here. That's fine, of course. But I'm confident that Tamara and Oscar must be somewhere here. Hey, Oscar, Tamara, I have to tell you, Zoom meeting remind me of something. Perhaps my pets? So are they... This is also remind me of what? Something about Tamara and Oscar. Oh, don't laugh, that's you. Well, and now I saw everyone turn on the cameras. Fans, are you all right? You watch your background. You had a self from the grass. Could you hear me? Yes? You need to change. No response. Okay, fine. Well, everyone, seriously, let's, let me ask you a very, very quick question. Who enjoy online class at 4 a.m. in the morning? Oh, it's actually 7, 7 a.m. in the morning in the Tasmania or 8. Damn, damn, I'm late for Kensei the class. Sorry, Kensei, I know you will ask me, Ming Ming, why are you late for your class? Kensei, I know your class of, online class are very popular. There is network traffic. I'm on and off all the time. I can only hear from you, tourism, tourism, tourism. What else can I say? Oh, I also forgot that I'm also a teacher. But online teaching have completely changed who we are. Let's be honest. I now have a really, really bad habit speaking to myself. Ming Ming, uh, your slides aren't working. That's a problem. This would never happen offline. Exactly. Ming Ming, can you please make sure that you've got your slides on? I don't I don't think the rest of the people can actually see what you're sharing. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Ming Ming. Oh, that's sorry, I'm late for kids in the class. Oh, 
I forgot one thing. I'm also a good teacher, but online teaching completely changed who I'm on. And now I have a very bad habit of speaking to everyone saying, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. So very bad. Hi, Dennis. Again, can you help me? My screen freeze. What? Yeah, the you just need left? to press that button in the left, right corner. Left, left, you know, right. On, on the top bottom panel. You oh. see when I'm pointing? Just oh, there. No, no, no. Okay, stop, stop. And now I got it. Guys, let's be serious. With so many online teaching platforms, how could you know all of them? Yesterday is a Microsoft team, today is a Zoom, but tomorrow is a Blackboard. The day of tomorrow is another. Do you think I'm a Superman? Well, I feel I'm down, enough is enough. Guys, could you help me? Because I want to save my hairs. This is online teaching makes me crazy. But, but, I know you guys love all the jokes. And let's be serious. Debate is about debate. Now, let me ask everyone a very serious question. Would you be happy if someone who only learned first aid faced on, online and pra practiced the first aid on you will actually really need it? Seriously, would you want it? I know all of you love jokes, but, 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 we enjoy having jokes online but have you always thought of people who are, have no access or very limited access to internet or have the right equipment to do online teaching? What about those people in developing countries? Have you care about them? I'm sorry to say that, but many of us love jokes, but we are living in a very privileged society. Thank you, thank you for those critical to the scholars. You always remind us that we need to think of beyond the box, box. We need to think beyond what we have now. We need to think of people who actually don't have access that alone proper equipment and software. So if with everything going online, we're going to create a very divided society, digital society. Technologically speaking, moving on everything online, is a bad, bad, bad. By the way, do you ever hear about that? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I was just about to stop you, but I didn't have to. Beautiful timing there. Very good. Uh, very interesting use of uh, technology there. Uh, I'm sure you had some of us fooled, but not everyone. All right. So we will now move on to the next speaker for the um, wherever you are. Who, who am I going? <laughs> this, is, this is hilarious. This is what happens when you don't plan these. So the next speaker. Yeah. Whoever that is, speak. <laughs> Tamara, I assume, given the given the University of Newcastle thing that's just popped up, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be Tamara. Unmute. Oh, hello everybody. Can you see my slides? Great. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tamara Young. I am based at the University of Newcastle on a Wabakal country. Most of you know me because I'm pretty famous, well, possibly quite infamous within the Kalthi circles. And if you don't know me, you can look me up online, of course. So, so far, the other team has tried to convince you that face-to-face -face teaching is not outdated. I'm actually finding that many of their arguments are quite banal. It's just so much outdated drivel. I mean, look at them. They can't even get the technology right. It appears to me that they are a team of glass half empty people. Our team knows that not only is the glass half full, but it is always refillable. And anyway, while they were blabbing on about face-to-face -face teaching, I sold their glass, online of course. Now, just a warning, I take my role in this debate very seriously. My proposition for the affirmative is simple. Firstly, they are wrong. And secondly, we are right. And I have substantive evidence to support my claims. So first, 
the other team has attempted to make you think that educators prefer face-to-face -face teaching. They've suggested that online learning is something of the poor, jealous girlfriend to face-to-face -face teaching, but they are wrong, which leads me to fact number two. Our team is right. We should move everything online and keep it there. The basic fact is the world has changed and online is where it's at. Moving online is not an option. It is a reality. It is not the future. It is the here. It is the now. Now, I'm not saying that moving everything online and keeping it there is easy. Higher education and university education Educators, we suffered severe disruption last year. We are living in challenging, uncertain and unprecedented times. But any arguments against online teaching are so 2020. And who wants to be stuck in 2020? It was an absolutely shit year. Now, fortunately, I can present for you a number of arguments based on my personal experience. In semester two of 2020, my university went back to face-to-face -face teaching. Students who could not come to class attended online. So here is my classroom. Observe my students. Bored, empty desk, looking out the window, talking, leaving the room. Now look at my online student cohort. They are literally glued to the screen, hanging on to every single word that I say. Now, in that lecture room, we had to be extremely COVID safe. I could not teach these face-to-face -face classes without the following. Massive bucket of antibacterial wipes. Uh, they're gigantic buckets spraying all surfaces in the lecture theatre with antibacterial sprays, bringing my very own hand sanitizer to ensure my personal hygiene and having social distancing champions to patrol the students. With that amount of alcohol-based paraphernalia, I would much prefer to be teaching online with a single bottle of alcohol-based product. Now, online teaching is not simple. It requires new and innovative pedagogies. As educators, we need to be strong. We need to, uh, uh, we need to be agile and we need to have adaptability. But most importantly, my friends, is pivotability. I have coined this term for this debate. And I now bring you five examples of pivotability from my book, Pivotability for Dummies, a book that I'm writing specifically for the other team. To be pivotable, you need to trust the robots. They are very smart and much friendlier than colleagues. I have never had a colleague tell me that I'm looking good before going into a lecture. To be pivotable, you need to use Zoom to your advantage. For example, don't wear pants. Business up the top, party down the bottom. Wear your pyjamas, wear your budgie, budgie smugglers, go nude. No one will ever know. And then, of course, there's the trick of putting wine in a coffee cup. No one knows what you're drinking. Who doesn't love Zoom drinks? It's always wine o'clock somewhere in the world. Look at us. We're so happy. Oscar's in... WA, it could have been 8 a.m. in the morning. And look at me, I was pivoting like a ballerina after that large glass of red wine. We have also pivoted to online conferences. Here is an amazing group of esteemed colleagues from around the world sharing their research online. Look at everyone in this photograph, so engaged. Everyone here clearly has the pivot factor. Well, everyone except my colleague on the opposing team, Dennis Colchat. Dennis Tolkatch. Sorry, Dennis. Um, I conclude with one final example of excellence in pivotization, if I may say so myself, and that's the creation of an online seminar series. Now, many of you join the ISO chats weekly and experience the momentous occasion of the Zoom bomb. The Zoom bomb involved a huge number of random people from around the world joining our seminar. Now, not only did this lovely group of Zoom bombers take over Brent Ritchie's computer and direct us to an online pornography site, but they also very kindly offered to fuck us all.
What an extraordinary compliment. So in conclusion, it's straightforward. Vote for my team. You all know how to do it online. <laughs> that was fantastic, Tamara. And I have to say, I was going to leap in to stop you, but that story is definitely worth the retelling once more. <laughs> That was an absolute cracker. <laughs> oh dear. All right. So uh, I think you'll all agree this debate's going very well indeed. Uh, it's very close. Um, so who is leaping into the fray next? Dennis. Excellent. Take it away. Uh, can you see my slides? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so far the affirmative team just uh, noticed that we also can use internet. And yes, we do, but it's not that we really love it. So now let's move on from online teaching to researching online. Let's try to imagine what happens if we move all our research activities online and keep them there. Let me make a quick note here. The human civilization won't really notice whether we do research, don't do it at all, or how we do it but that's beyond the point. So let's do a thought experiment of what the research of the affirmative team and the phenomena they research would look like if it's all moved online. And unfortunately, we can only do thought experiments now because universities no longer have funding to undertake proper experiments. First, let's look at Faith's research. She does research on volunteer tourism. How would volunteerism look online? One popular volunteerist activity is helping cute little cuddly turtles reach the sea after hatching. So let's help them online. Come on, little guys, you can make it to the sea. The sea is that way. Keep moving, guys. Come on, come on. Oops, the birds are coming. Go away, bird. Leave the poor turtle alone. Haven't you heard about coffee be kind campaign? Oh no, it's eating the turtles. Oh no, all turtles are dead. Well, that didn't work. Uh, let's go on to other research. Oscar ethnographically researches gay resorts. Uh, his research is qualified not safe uh, for work, so I didn't upload any pictures. There's some impressive visual, visual material also in his uh, journal articles, uh, pretty much in the same line that we saw in the presentation earlier today. So have a look at his papers, but at home. And I thought I'll try this line of research online. And what happened is that my wife didn't believe I'm watching gay porn in the name of science. Now she's suspicious, and this is not the outcome I was expecting either. Kansin writes about creativity and destination branding. So how about we pitch moving all tourism events online as a creative solution for the industry? I wrote an email to our DMO, Tourism Tropical North Queensland, suggesting exactly that, moving all tourism online. And you see what the reply was? As you can see, that didn't work well either. One potential guest speaker less for me. I guess we can't bridge that divide between academia and industry by suggesting the industry should have no customers and no revenue. Last but not least, Tamara has investigated professional development of tourism staff. So where does the professional development lead staff if tourism is all online? to the doll queue for their unemployment benefits. And that's the future the affirmative team wants for us all. And now is a good time to take a step back and look at the big picture. Let's not forget who we are and where we came from. Can you really move all hospitality, tourism and events online? The affirmative team here is into digging their own graves, killing the goose that laid golden eggs, and Oscar is in particular into cutting branches he's sitting on. Let's not do that. And let's not destroy our universities either. A university is not about empty buildings and staff teaching from home. It's a place to connect people and ideas. People bring life into the buildings. Just look at what happened to the campus of University of Tasmania after the lockdown. You see? And let's not be mistaken about what the affirmative team is proposing. It might sound like old jokes, but basically they want us to be always online, always connected to machines, get lost in the virtual worlds and lose connection to the reality. Hang on, that reminds me something. Oh yeah, that's right. The affirmative team suggests we take the blue pill and enjoy the matrix. Is that what you want, dear colleagues? Is that it? I can't see any feedback. 
Okay, but I don't think so. But I know who else would like the affirmative team's ideas. These guys. Yes, the so-called critical tourism scholars that comprise the affirmative team are just selling us to the big tech. And to that, we must all say, you shall not pass. And I'm done here. <laughs> oh, dear. Well done. Let me just check if I'm, I should be, yes, you should be able to hear me now. Um, let me cancel my timer because you did very well there. Um, Dennis, in terms of timing, excellent, very good, well done. Now, we are down, I think, to our last two presenters. So it's getting very tense, um, you know, great points from, from both sides. So let's see who is going to swing it in this last, actually, I probably should rephrase that given some of the things that people have been talking about. Let's see who's going to sway your opinion most. Okay, who's next? I'm next, all right. Um, good afternoon, Judith, our dear uh, moderator, and uh, hello, everyone. All right, I'll just start off with a message of love. I, I, I sense that the three speakers before uh, in the opposing team have been very negative. They hate us. We are a group of loving people. We have a love message to you, dear opponents. You are wrong, all right? That is all, all right? And let us try to help you, all right? So look, all right, what you're telling us is that you want to go back to the past, all right? You are doing what Sharon has, uh, no, sorry, Faith has been telling us about pastism. You want to go back to the future. That is a fantastic movie, except it is the wrong future. Go back to your horse carriages, Go back to your library card catalogs. Do you remember those days? Well, we can be very romantic about it. It is fantastic, but it is not the correct future. I have an image of an old classroom behind me. It is very nice, but that is the past and it should always be behind me. So let us address truth, science, and get rid of alternative facts. So Ming Ming, you came up with this wonderful idea that we should help the third world. That is correct. You have good intentions, but those are the wrong good intentions. If there is a divided society, a divided digital world, that is a big problem. The solution is not to get rid of digitalization. The solution is to give everyone the opportunity to have access to the internet. And we must remember that face-to-face -face interaction, despite your loving and hugging and shaking hands, we should remember what Chancellor Merkel says to the German. Don't visit your grandparents during Christmas because it might be the last Christmas. Don't you love your friends and family? Don't you love humanity? Don't you want to bring the classroom to the third world? instead of depriving the whole world of the joy of online loving or online learning. Oh, Tracy, all right. We all know, I think yesterday it has gone viral with this cat and the lawyer. People seem to be very, very confused, right? And we are asking for face-to-face -face interaction. If you are worried that a lawyer looks like a kitten, you have company. We have alternative facts. We have seen it in the Capitol in Washington. Right? Mixing around doesn't help you. Right? It is so outdated. One of the things that you have done correctly all right, is that you have to get into the right company. So far, you have the wrong company. You have been drinking away your problems. That is a good solution to a certain extent. You need to seek help. How are you going to seek help? see a doctor, or better still, befriend my team. They are fantastic people. Tell us your problems and give us your drinks. Dennis, what happens if we move research activities online and keep it there? Well, new research projects come about. One thing I can tell you, Dennis, is that we have the pivotability young 2021 factor, all right? As a group of people, I've never met a more stubborn group of people in my team. 
but we know that we are kick butts, right? We are going to kick butts because we have all these awards from the old world. We want to continue winning prizes. And because of that, we are going to pivot. We are not going to live in the glory of the past. That is ridiculous. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> so, but nonetheless, this is a message of love. All right? We all are just wondering why. All right? We have a research question out of this uh, in our team. Why is it that you guys, are, we love you very much. We know you personally. You are clever. You're authentic. You are fantastic people. But why? Why are you on the wrong side? You have done fantastic research. We tried to find a lot of answers and we found the answer. Judith. Judith is your Dr. Evil. She put you in a difficult situation. She forced you to take the wrong side. But I have good news for you. Tracy, Ming Ming, Danny, Sharon, it is not too late. Acknowledge the truth, do the right thing, turn on your pivotability quotient, free yourselves. And then what we are going to do is we are going to listen to Prince. We love Prince, we love you, we love Judith. Actually, we love everyone who is listening in and we are going to party like it's 1999. But that is also very outdated, right? So what you should actually do is you should just join us. <laughs> All right, we are going to party like it's 2021, drop pastism, go on onlineism, people love the truth, don't be afraid, show your legs, join us. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ken Seng. I'd love to speak, but I'm having a spot of trouble just at the moment. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, right, thank you so much for that. I've never looked quite so glamorous in my life. <laughs> It must be time for us to speak to our last presenter, Sharon. I hope you've got some. Oh, sorry, hmm. Sharon. I hope you've got something really cool for us. I'm looking forward to it. And if I'm in it, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> okay. Can you see my slides? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, I'm Sharon Hebden, and I am the final speaker for the negative team. Now, my most objection, my greatest objection to the comments that have been made by my opponents really relate to Prince. I'll tell you people, Prince is timeless and you should know that. I'd like to thank particularly my teammates. Uh, Tracy really reminded you all of how much better coffee is when we're all together. Ming Ming has very ably demonstrated that online is full of glitches. And, uh, and Dennis has made it clear that research is just not going to be the same ever again unless we find a way to get back to face to face. So as a final speaker for the negative side, I want to reiterate that we do not agree that we should stay online. In fact, we must return to face to face. And I'm going to take you on a journey reminding you of the things that we love about face to face. Sorry to interrupt, uh, but we can't see your slide, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sharing. It's telling me I'm sharing. It's saying stop share. How about I stop sharing and try again? This is uh, another reason to not be face to face. Can you see that now? No? No, we still can't see them, sorry. Okay, let me try again. Let me try this one, it's a different screen, see if that'll, is that working? No. No? By the way, this is not on purpose. This is this the is actual problem. Okay. This is me trying to share my application window, share. <laughs> uh, I, no, won't share? It, uh, okay, let me try. Want to have some tea? Is that sharing now? No, it says it's screen sharing. It says it's, yeah. It started. But we, just, we can't see your slides. So it says screen sharing, Sharon, but no slides. That one? No? No. Oh my gosh. How, how, I don't know. I don't know what to do, people. <laughs> 
Just do your I'll best, try. please, Joan. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try again. We uh, share that sharing. No. Yep. Uh, we don't. Uh, we're not allowed. This is a really great. Uh, um, segue into why we should be it face to face. We're not allowed to use Chrome in our uh, uh, Zoom in our organisation because of all of the security issues with it. So that might have something to do with uh, my technical issues. So uh, it does make my uh, argument a little um, difficult to share. But how about I? Uh, I'll try and do my best with it. Um, Sharon, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, someone has suggested maybe someone from your team can share your slides if yeah. they've got them. Yeah, I'm just, ah, I'm just trying. I can send them. I'm just trying to find. I'm actually on my own email trying to find Sharon's slides. I'll just send it to you right now. Someone else has suggested what if you click press slide and see if it goes to the next one. I'll uh, try that too. This is team affirmative helping team negative, by the way. Oh, this you is, know, this is, of, because of this, all the this love. Is, this is not even uh, us meaning to make a point, but it is making a great point. If I go, no, it's it's not going to share it at all anyway, is it? I'm on going to the next one. Um, Sharon, have you sent them to me? Yep. Hang on, I'll just go right into mine and get it. Um, The session cuts off soon. What time does it cut off, Penny? We've got seven minutes, so if you do your five minutes, that only leaves us with two minutes for voting. Okay. Well, Have you got them, Tracy? Uh, hang on, just give me one second. I think I've got them. Maybe crack on, Sharon, and then yep. when the uh, lies appear, we can we can uh, catch up. Yeah. Well, right. hang on, I've got them. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. I just want to remind you all of the joys of being face to face and big reminder about uh, Can you see that? Yeah, let, let's go to this this guy, Tracy. I think yep. you've got an old version there. I think you're okay, showing Sorry, that's all I've got. That's fine. That's fine. I want to introduce you all to this guy. I remember I am telling you about the reasons we love face to face and we love this guy. He is one of the reasons I want to get back to the classroom. On Zoom, this guy has his camera off and I can't see any of this. I want him back in my class. I want to see this happening in real time. I want to see his eyelids fluttering. I want to see them getting heavier. I want to see his head bobbing. And if I'm really lucky, I'm going to be looking at him right at the moment his neck snaps and he wakes up with a start in his chair. I'm not going to get any of that on Zoom. And our next one, these people. You remember these people? These are our guest speakers. We, some of us, promise our firstborn to get them to visit us on campus. Otherwise, we corral our cats of students to get them to a site visit. We spend weeks and weeks organising that 30-minute casual chat followed by a Q&A. And the whole time, we're wondering if our students will even show up. But you know what? We know we're alive. Our hearts are pumping when we wake up in the middle of the night wondering if we booked that conference room. We're thinking of new ways to threaten our students to attend. And at the same time, we hope the guy from the last slide just doesn't come at all. Our adrenaline is pumping and it's good for us. We know our hearts are working. And what about the sense of relief 
when our students not only turn up, but they ask reasonable questions and they even look interested. We don't get that on Zoom. So then there's this lady. Our next lady is the mature age student. I know she's on Zoom too, and her questions are all over the chat if she can get it to work, but that's no fun. I want her in the classroom with me. And I tell you, I want to be the first one out of the room. She presents me with a challenge. Can I turn off my screen, log off the computer and be out of the door before she stops to ask me a million questions? Can I find a new way back to my office without her following me? This might be the only real exercise I get in a day. And on Zoom, I just don't get that. Click, end meeting, and she is gone. So thanks, Tracy. These are all some of the things we have loved to hate about face-to-face. And some of our colleagues, our opponents, have reminded us about some other things about face-to-face -face and suggested that we're somehow living in the past. But you know what? 2020 presented us with this really interesting conundrum. Whilst we might have loved to hate some of these things about the past, what if we don't have them at all anymore? It just wouldn't be the same. And I think it's fair to say that in itself has been an interesting lesson for a lot of us. So as the final speaker for the negative team, can I please leave you with a real some real reminders of what we actually love to love about face-to-face? -face? First off, Tracy, are our, the faces of brand new students. We love them. We also love the next one of students learning from each other. We love too the students who want to have fun with us. And we also love real industry experiences that you can taste. We love real placements. We love real group work. And very much lastly, we love a real sense of achievement. I just want to leave you with the notion that there are lots of reasons that we should be face to face. And the main reason is the people we enroll. They don't want to be online. They want us back with them face to face in real life. So make sure you vote negative. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, so now what we need to do is we need to organize the voting. Um, so that is probably something that you've already decided on exactly what you want to do. I'm not sure if you have decided or not, but certainly for most people, I'm sure you've got a good idea of what you need to be doing. I just need to work out how to do it. I need to close the chat. I need to do this. And then I need to get somebody to help me press the button. Judith, the, the poll has been launched. We're getting votes in now. All right, so you get to uh, decide as quickly as possible because we will get cut out of this session very soon. So if you can all vote in the next like 20 seconds, that would be really helpful. If you vote for the affirmative side, the next coffee will be online as well. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, um, quickly, quickly, everyone, I'm sorry about this, but obviously there was a technical issue. Um, I'm not completely sure whether you can see the results of the votes coming in or not. I know I can't. Can. Just very quickly with 10 seconds to go, the affirmative side has won with 62% of the votes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Congratulations to the other team. You all did fantastically. It was great as usual. It's been cut off. Okay. It's been cut off.